All right, YouTube, today we're taking a look at a seesaw or a teeter-totter. You call it whatever you want. Now on one side, we've got a tiny little 25 kilogram person sitting two meters away from the fulcrum or pivot point. And the question is, where do we put a 75 kilogram person to balance out that seesaw? Now the main idea in this problem is that the sum of all torques acting on the teeter-totter or seesaw around the pivot point that's right here is equal to zero. You see, a torque would cause this teeter-totter to rotate in one direction or another, but we want it to stay balanced, which means the total torque needs to add up to zero. Now there's two things which are producing torque on this beam. The first being the weight of this little person sitting over here on the right hand side. The other force being the weight of this larger person sitting over here. And working out those values, we find the force by gravity from the smaller person is 245 newtons, and the force by gravity on the larger person is 735 newtons. Now really what's happening here is each of these forces are producing a competing torque around this pivot point. Where the torque from the little kid is trying to make the teeter-totter rotate clockwise, and the torque from the grown-up is trying to rotate this whole beam counterclockwise. So if there's two torques in this problem, then going back down here, the sum of all torques is actually the torque from the grown-up, I'll call that T sub G, or tau sub G, plus the torque from the kid or the child, and those need to add up to zero. Now, one important thing to realize is that since these torques are in opposite directions, one clockwise, one counterclockwise, that means one of these torques is in the negative direction. Now the convention in physics, typically, is that we'll say counterclockwise is positive, meaning the torque from this heavy person or this grown-up right here was trying to make the whole beam rotate counterclockwise, that's a positive torque. But the torque from this kid sitting over here trying to make the beam rotate clockwise is going to be in the negative direction. Now which way we choose to call positive really isn't all that important because in the very next step you'll see we're going to say the torque from the grown-up is equal in magnitude to the torque from the kid. All we did was just move this over to the other side of the equal sign. Now we know torque is given by the equation radius times force multiplied by the sine of the angle between the force and the radius. And all we're going to do here is apply this equation to each of these objects. So starting with the kid over here, the torque by the kid on the beam is going to be equal to the radius, that is the distance between the kid and the pivot point, so that's two meters, multiplied by the force they're exerting on the beam, that's 245 newtons. And last there's this sine theta. Now the angle between the radius, that is, the vector that goes straight from this pivot point to the force, and the force, which is straight down, is ultimately 90 degrees. Which means this sine term is going to work out to be 1. Now when looking at the grown-up, the torque by the grown-up is going to be given by the radius, that's what we're trying to solve for. I'm just going to call that R for now multiplied by their force, that's 735 newtons. And again, the angle between the radius vector, going from the pivot to the force, and the force itself is again 90 degrees, which is still 1. So plugging these two values into our little equation over here, we're going to have the torque by the grown-up is equal to the torque by the kid. And solving for the radius, we find if the grown-up sits two-thirds of a meter from the pivot point, this whole teeter-totter will be balanced. So the next time you're on a seesaw with a friend, now you can figure out where to sit, so the whole thing is nice and balanced. Now I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.